Brent, what is your prediction of the Grub Proof Sear Challenge 2022? Pain. What's going on guys? If you weren't aware, I was a contestant on the past season of the Sear Challenge put on by Randall with Grump Proof on YouTube. The Sear Challenge essentially consists of a contestant having 24 hours to survive and move through arduous terrain to reach a pre-designated extraction point, all the while being hunted by another contestant who's supported by scouts and other assets like drones. After the 24 hour time limit expires, regardless of whether the survivor makes it to the extraction point without being captured or not, Contestants switch roles and the hunter becomes the hunted. The whole concept of this challenge sounded really awesome to me and when I was approached to do it by Randall, I was more than eager to test myself in this grueling challenge. The whole season 2 series is already out and released on Randall's dedicated Sear Challenge channel, so I highly encourage you all to go over there and check it out if you haven't already. This video is going to be mostly footage from the GoPro I was using so that you guys get a better up close look at my experience during the entirety of the Sear Challenge. After a flight from North Texas to Northern California, I was picked up and taken to Randall's cabin up in the mountains. There I met Randall, as well as Bill, aka Stokermatic, for the first time. Bill is essentially Randall's right hand man for this challenge, and was also a contestant on season one. I also met Jared, aka Two Alpha Solutions on YouTube, who is a Navy veteran and would be my competition for the challenge. Next, we got a quick brief by Randall over the whole challenge, essentially all the ground rules. Following that brief, Randall asked me to change into what I was going to be wearing for the Sear Challenge because he was going to get some film of me getting briefed on a mission. My mindset at the time was that the challenge was going to be beginning first thing in the morning because that's how season one had started. Mind you, I've been traveling literally all day, so a good night's rest before the challenge began would have been ideal. After a quick bite to eat, Bill gave me a quick class on how to run the GoPro camera that I'd be using for the challenge. He also gave us a quick PME on how to escape while your wrists were duct taped, and as well as being flexi cuffed. And with a sawing motion, you're just going to go back and forth as fast as you can, and it'll cut right through it. Boom. Done, son. <laughs> got the hair. Woo! That was worse. <laughs> Next, I was taken to another location and given another brief over a mission I was going to be tasked with carrying out during a SEER challenge. Randall had already told me that season two was going to be very different than season one. And he was going to be adding a whole lot of new things to this. So it's all really made sense to me. Following the brief, Randall began to bring me back to his cabin until I got an unexpected surprise. That's right, they were capturing me. Unbeknown to me, the challenge was about to begin, literally within a couple of hours of me arriving to Randall's place. After having a bag placed over my head, I was loaded in the back of a vehicle. I was then transported to a remote location somewhere in the mountains. Mind you, I couldn't see the whole time and had no idea where I was going. When they finally pulled the head covering off, I was inside a tent sitting across from Bill, who was acting as an interrogator. For the next several hours, I'd be interrogated about my mission and having mind games played on me. What are you doing here in our nation? I made a wrong turn. You made a wrong turn? What do you mean you made a wrong turn? I thought you were a Marine. Don't you know how to navigate? What's your intention? What's your name? What's your name? What's your rank? And what's your serial number? How are we going to let your headquarters know and your nation and your President Biden that I know that you love What's your unit? No habla. No habla. I know fucking habla. There's no mastermind game here. What are you doing here? What's your intention? Invading another country yet again. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> no, well, fuck, fuck you. Fuck all of you. You go to hell. Rip off your head and shit down your neck. Are you not going to be able to do that too effective, are you? When he pops to the chest and one of the head? Well, first I was going to take that scrapple and stick it in your eye. <laughs> and then I was planning on breaking your neck. I know it's only about that big. It'll fucking hurt. You already have kids though, right? So it won't matter. 
Don't you have kids? Fuck you. <laughs> What's your unit? You know what? That's all right. You want to sit here? You can sit here. I got all the time in the world. Man, I got all day. I got kids. You got kids? Man, if my kids became gold star kids, you know, if my wife became a gold star wife, you got to start telling us something. Or you know how this is going to end. And because you're not here on official business, nobody's ever going to know that you were here. You're not going to get a purple heart. Hey, boss. Yeah. They said his buddies are telling him everything over there. Y you hear that? They're talking right now. They're going to get to go home to their families. Screaming like little girls. Giving up all the information. If you don't want to disappear into the blackness of nothing, because that's all that's going to happen here. You can take that. Can't take this. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. See you in the morning, turd. The interrogation dragged out to the wee hours of the morning when the Op 4 finally gave me the opportunity to sleep. Several hours later, once most of my captors were asleep and a sentry that was on duty was distracted by a radio transmission, I managed to slip one of my hands out of a flexi cuff that had a little bit of play in it. I then grabbed a set of deuce gear that was sitting on a chair inside my tent. And then I made my move. After successfully escaping the camp, the challenge was on. I now had 24 hours to reach the extraction point without being captured by Jared to be hot on my trail. He got out! He went that way, right up that gulch! I want him dead! I want his family dead! I want his balls on a platter! We're coming for you, Brent! We're coming right. for you! I'm gonna go get some Brent. You said you're coming for me. I'm coming for you, dude. You're gonna freeze. Right that way. Go ahead. We're gonna be waiting on you at your LV no later than 23 hours from now. From here, you need to head northeast. I'll copy. Roger, solid copy. Survivor out. All right, so I just made radio comms with Iyer. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna take a operational pause. I gotta, I gotta get this goddamn flexi cuff off my wrist. I'm gonna black out any face paint, and then uh, I gotta.
gonna start heading northeast. So, uh, let's take care of it. are thick as fuck guys look at this I'm essentially having to crawl my hands and knees through this and my avenues of approach are pretty slim I'm pretty much just having to find these little tiny trails that are just big enough for me to crawl through and slowly make my way down Holy shit, guys, look at that view. Looks like I might have stumbled upon a trail, too. Yeah, except I just realized you took all my warming layers, you bastard. And there's no shit paper. Uh, some of your stuff should still be in one of those pouches. Yeah, I'll keep looking. <laughs> guys I've gained a little bit more distance on them so I'm pretty comfortable now to kind of go through my gear see what see what Randall blessed me with and what he fucked me on so uh, let's dig through this and see what we got shit in this canteen pouch. Looks like we got a sterile compress. I'll probably end up using this as shit paper. Looks like it gave us gay bar. Stab the hunter's face with this. Alright, canteen. Up and eat her. Radio pouch. It's my comms. Nothing else in there. Alright. I got my watch cap. Neck gator. Got my sniper fail. Sitting there. 
tracker. Uh, looks like I got two, two granola bars. Make a lot of damn noise. straight up over this hill. Originally I was gonna to try to make it for a saddle, but if you guys look, I'm just inundated with manzanita. And I don't know if I can get through that quietly. <clears throat> so I think I'm actually gonna do a beeline and go straight northeast up this hill. Right through there. I haven't heard any talking. I haven't heard any radio chatter. Uh, from the enemy so so far so good and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way that direction unless I start hearing the enemy moving on me so let's go hey Roy yeah. Yeah, go ahead. hey let Randall know I put his sterilized bandage to good use Must be the sailor. I knew you would improvise. <laughs> you left me no choice, buddy. <laughs> little hole next to me that probably a deer beds down in but the thing I uh, I'm realizing as I'm moving is uh, heat management so this morning it was probably in the low 30s and uh, you know I have a base layer on underneath this uh, these camis nothing heavy just lightweight base layer um, so as I stepped off it was fine you know moving gen bodies generating heat but the problem with that is that's all I have. It's the only warming layers I got in terms for my body. 
there was a watch cap and a neck gaiter and gloves obviously in addition to that but the problem I'm gonna run into if I don't get those off my body is I'm gonna get them sweaty they're gonna get wet and then when that Sun starts to go down tonight and it starts dropping back down to 30s I'm gonna be fucked so um, right now I'm gonna I'm gonna take those base I'm gonna take some time take those base layers off stow them in my butt back and that way when the Sun starts to go down later I've got nice dry base layers to put on it's the only warmer layer I got so uh, but at least it'll be dry as opposed to if I wear them this whole time they're gonna get soaking wet they won't dry and then uh, when that Sun goes starts going down I'll start freezing and it'll be a bad day so that's what I'm gonna do right now go ahead and strip that stuff off so while I'm getting this uh, base layer off, I guess I'll show you guys what I'm running. So I got some Rancor issue rat boots. These are pretty much made for rugged terrain, like what I'm in right now. I'm also wearing some uh, some Swiss gaiters, just for some shin, ankle support. Obviously I'm wearing old school Woodland camis. And then uh, got the Nomex flight gloves, boonie. And, uh, Obviously, you guys saw the, the other gear I got, but uh, this is this is what I got. This is my warm layer right here. Just Marine Corps issue, freaking base layer. All right, guys, so I just got my base layer off. Uh, I just got a big intel dump on me. So headquarters just told me that they got a enemy activity 600 meters northwest of me. Um, so that's quite a, quite a distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the pace try to gain some ground on them and uh, now that I know that the enemy is primarily northwest of me uh, I don't have to be as quiet right now until something tips me off to, to slow down the rate of march so get my deuce gear back on and we're gonna get moving look at that guy this land is fucking beautiful all right quick update I think I made it to the top of the hill so if you guys remember when I was down below in that draw, I was looking up at the two hills and there was a saddle in between. And uh, my original intent was to go into that saddle and cross those two hills that way. But the uh, the terrain had a vote in that koa. So I ended up coming straight up the left hill. So picture the hills as a pair of titties. I went up the left titty. So right now I'm at the top of the titty, the nipple, you could call it. Um, about the crest it uh, last Intel report again enemy was about 600 meters to my northwest so again I'm gonna keep picking up the pace until uh, I start getting signs of enemy in the area and then I'm gonna slow it down again so I just want to show you the kind of stuff I'm dealing with right now I've spent more time crawling on my hands and knees and on my belly than I've liked uh, but if you guys can see this is what ends up happening. You get in this big patch of manzanitas. And uh, you gotta look for an opening. Like that's my opening right there, that little tiny crevice. So literally the only way through this stuff is just crawling on through. And uh, sometimes you can power on through it, but a lot of it, it's so thick, it's just impassable. So I just gotta crawl one stride at a time <laughs> through it. All right, so here's the backside of this hill. So now I gotta find a route down on the opposite side. It looks like it's gonna be tough. This, this whole hill has been saturated with these manzanitas. If that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. Um, so it's been pretty freaking brutal. But uh, just gonna slowly but surely make our way down. I, I keep hearing the four wheelers. They sound like they're pretty far, far west of me. So we're on a good course. We're on a good course. I'm pretty confident that the uh, the hunter isn't in, in this area. However, he could be on one of these adjacent hills, watching down. So I gotta, I've gotta be cognizant of skylining myself going down this hill. But as you guys can see, it's pretty arduous terrain, and it looks like I got another big hill to, to make my way up once I get across this uh, valley down here. I got a tip from higher that the enemy might be in my AO. I heard some rustling of bushes. I'm not sure if it's an animal or if it's
Thanks, Jared. I'm going to hunker down here for a minute. Let it pass. And then we'll get moving again. guys so i just got an intel perk and uh a higher says i'm cleared to move enemies moved out of my area but they are on the move they are moving around so just to be extra vigilant so i'm gonna pick up i'm gonna start moving through this thick shit as I'm finding these big logs from fallen trees and literally walking on top of them. <laughs> That's the only way I'm able to get through it. You guys can see this is just ridiculous. It's so thick in here. Alright, so moving through this thick stuff is, is really taxing. Um, so I'm just going to take an operational hold. I got two of these. 200 calories per bar. I'm gonna go ahead and expend one. So I'm gonna take a minute, relax, sip some water. I only have one canteen. Any one of these bars. Okay, Rogers. I mean, uh, I'm clear of enemy in front of me. Roger, solid copy. Tango. Look at this, guys. It's just some standby me shit right here. It's a freaking log bridge goes all the way down. Finally catching some breaks here. Let's get on it. And of course, more manzanitas. shit in front of me <laughs> and then I got to go up another hill another incline but I'm going straight in this direction taking that uh that northeast northeast path I say again the enemy is utilizing UAV assets against me I'll copy
Roger, survivor out. I just heard an enemy UAV asset flying nearby. However, it was not. It was not overhead me. Uh, it didn't seem like it was nearby either. So that tells me that that uh, the enemy has no idea where I am. <laughs> and I don't blame them because I'm in the middle of all this bullshit. And uh, it's hard as hell to get out of it. So uh, I'm going to give it a minute and uh, wait till I don't hear that annoying mosquito buzzing anymore and then I'm gonna start pushing again. Look guys, it's ribbed for her pleasure. All right, so <clears throat> it looks like I'm starting to descend this hill. So I must be going into that draw. So I'll get down into the draw and then I'm gonna shoot back up onto that opposite side ridge. start going back uphill. Yay. Looks like an unused trail. Follow this a bit and see where it leads. And the answer is to nowhere. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm about halfway up the ridge. If you look across over there, that's the ridge I came up and down. So made some significant progress. Uh, I still don't think the enemy has any idea I'm over here yet. Uh, they used their UAV and uh, it was nowhere near me. So I think that's their perk for the hour. So I think for the next hour or so, I think I'm pretty solid on uh, picking up the rate of speed uh, with relative security. So unless I catch my breath here for a minute, sip some water and then get to it. All right, so I just got word from higher that the uh, northeast route is compromised. So uh, I'm thinking about switching it up. I'll start heading northwest. Um, they've been patrolling the shit out of the northwest all morning. I think they probably figured out that I'm not going that way, so I'll start heading that way. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Survivor, send it. Right, you can resume your original course. Roger, solid copy. All right. Right, I take that as the uh, northeast corridor is back in place, so I'm going to adjust fire and start going back northeast. I hear a four-wheeler down there. I think I might have a trail in front of me. That does sound good. There's a cloud, man. <laughs> so my question. 
question is, how far down this trail, if it's a trail, is he? Because I'd like to use this microphone as a mask to cover my m movement. But if he can see down the trail, that's not good. Headquarters is a survivor. Over. Hey, uh, be advised, enemies using psyops tactics against me break. They're uh, enticing me with cold beer and water burger over a loudspeaker break. They appear to be in the direction of my travel. Is there any updated enemy set rep? Over. Yeah, Roger, we copy. Don't uh, don't buy the narrative. Great. Yeah, just hold your position for a little bit. I can give you an update, but uh, don't fall for fake news. Roger, solid copy. Survivor out. I can hear the enemy's radio. They're that close. All you can eat soup sandwich. They're really ramping up the pressure now. Squad going around. There's a drone up in the air. Follow this log all the way up. It's a big fucking log. It looks like it's gonna take me pretty far up there through these uh, manzanita plants. So, yeah, good go. It's a little bit more open over here. Uh, the manzanitas are still here. It seems like they're a little bit more sparse, a little bit more scattered, not as fully developed as way back there. So hopefully that keeps up and I can gain some ground here. Uh, but I'm moving up this hill, so we'll see what's on the other side of it. It's still moving in a northeastern direction. So I just found a trail. So it's probably one of the ones they're using to drive ATVs down on it. So I'll try to get as fa away from this as fast as possible. I stumbled upon this dry creek bed. 
need to figure out how far away I am from the objective because I kind of like this place for uh, for my bivouac. We've got a lot of pine needles stuffed for insulation on the ground. Help keep my uh, body from getting sucked in from the ground. So uh, right now I'm just taking a break, waiting for uh, my next uh, Intel update. Sun's slowly going down. I thought it was a lot later than it actually was. Uh, but I'm going to formulate a plan here in a little bit. So that's that. HQ survivor. Go ahead. Are you able to tell me how far away I am from the objective? Over. Roger, solid copy. I didn't know Marines were mind readers. We have many skills, and we drink. Y'all want to live forever? <laughs> I brat. All right, so I just got word from higher about uh, I'm clear to keep moving northeast. He said about 15, 20 minutes, so the enemy's probably going to be in the AO. Um, also, he said that about about two clicks, no more than two clicks away from the objective. So, kind of puts in perspective how much further I need to go and uh, what my rest of my plan is going to be for tonight. So, I changed directions. I started going east instead of northeast. I think they're checking out the northeast corridor. So my guess is the hunter's looking at the drone's foot, the drone feed. So wherever they're doing that at, that tells me he's probably not over here where I am. So I'm gonna use the uh, drone sound as cover. Start uh, breaking bush back through these manzanitas because they are thick, very thick. It's a beating. So here we go. Go ahead for Survivor. Just checking on you, everything good? Yeah, yeah, it was a pain in the ass, but I'm through it. So I think I'm on track now. Yeah, looking good. Just so you're aware, we're having some uh, vehicle issues. So there's gonna be a lot of shenanigans not far from you. Roger. I hear the uh, flying shenanigan right now. Okay, that's that's in play, but we're gonna have some out of play stuff. So we're, we'll try to. You're gonna hear it, but we'll try to limit how that affects you guys. Roger, sod copy. shelter and all that stuff so 
I decided I'm gonna try to bring it in. I'm gonna try to win it. I'm gonna get there as, as soon as possible, so just uh catching my breath here and uh gonna push it on. Try to bring it in for the win. So I hear a four wheeler. And I bet you they're relocating the hunter. Sounds close. Real close. Well, that's not good. I think the hunter might have got relocated up on the same the same hill. stop somewhere up there. So I'm going to start pushing this direction. Going away from them. HQ, this is Survivor. HQ, HQ, Survivor. Great, no problem. Well, it's gonna get real interesting, guys. We're gonna start heading northeast again. Hopefully we uh, pushed further down, away from them, and then we'll be able to cut, cut up. Push. At this point, my plan was to move slowly and as quietly as possible to my east until I hit a main road. At that point, I would turn north and move stealthily up the road until I came within sight of the extraction point. At that point, it would be a dead sprint towards the extraction point until I made it in.
This is my bird. <laughs> Look at this. Congrats, so, right, man. Thanks. Good job. Fuck. My knees are shot. Here, let me show you where he is. I walk right past him. Oh my god. You flanked him. He's still sitting there. You want to go get him? <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> After 11 and a half hours, Brent has reached the extraction point. Jared! I'm waiting for you! Well, that concluded my first round as a survivor, guys. Next episode will be me as the hunter trying to stop Jared from reaching the extraction point. If you haven't seen the series, be sure to go over to the Grunt Proof Sear Challenge YouTube channel and watch the complete season two that's already uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you at part two.